So in the last few videos, I've been talking a lot about this Simrad uh, Tiller Pilot, and this is a brand new unit. So um, the other one I bought was a refurbished one, and I got it really cheap. But it turns out that um, the light was faulty, um, it was definitely used and it wasn't really refurbished quality. Um, so I, I was actually going to send it back because, I, you know, it just wasn't right. I don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think it was working properly and, oh, you know, one thing would lead to the other and it probably would have just been money wasted. However, uh, Simrad have come back to me via the supplier I got it from and they've offered to send me a brand new unit as a replacement, you know, for the same money. So I literally got it for half price. And um, yeah, and I've just sent the other one back today. So this one is a brand new unit. Um, you can actually tell it's brand new because the serial number is, is only digits. So it's miles ahead. It's also got a UKCA sticker um, and the wire's different. So the other one must have been an older model in some nature. Um, I don't know much about Tiller Pilots. I've got the end attached to one of my little 12 volt connectors. And I'm just gonna pop that in my 12 volt battery. Believe it or not, these are both the same brand of uh, battery, uh, whatever they're called, power bricks, whatever you wanna call them. They're both amazing. Uh, and I love them to bits. This one's slightly newer and better. It's a bigger battery um, and has higher AC output, which is why I have it in the van for things like my Nespresso and whatnot. But they've got a different uh, connector here, barrel connector, it's slightly different. So, uh, slightly annoying. But this is what I'm gonna use on the boat. Uh, if we switch it on, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, we can see. Now, I'm just going to switch this light off and this one. You can actually see, there you go, red light, green light, and it goes into standby mode. So it definitely works. Let's give it a little, uh, oh, play. And you may have seen these on, um, you know, on other sailing videos where they connect to the tiller. And while, while the guy's maybe doing his video, you hear this thing going like this. And it, you know, as it's adjusting the course. I've got these connectors as well. Now look, these, these are not boat worthy connectors and they're not expensive, but it came as a little set. So we can more permanently solder these two wires onto this barrel. And then if we want to, this barrel should just go straight in. Or, I mean, you know, for testing that'd be fine, or, we could actually put this little, um, well, let's move this and put that to make more sense. We've got this little female connector and this would actually go in the hole somewhere. And there's, you know, you could look, you've got a little cap to keep the water out. So I've actually found this really great blog article and it's about fitting a tiller pilot to a Cory B. Similar size to the uh, Drascom lugger actually. Um, and one of the problems this guy had was I don't think if we scroll down, yeah, the, where the tiller pilot needs to be mounted on the Cory B, uh, I don't think there's anywhere to mount it or it's too close to the seat, uh, the edge of the seat. So here's the seat and there's the edge of the seat here. So um, what he did was he made this little block. Now, that's a better picture there. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to try and mimic this. Now, I don't have any... Um, tough null but what I do have in plenty supply is wood so I'm going to make a little block like this out of wood and then we're going to drill a hole put stick this in it and then we're going to test it um before we we complete it so I think I'm going to get a piece of wood in roughly the same shape and I'm going to actually test it along my boat so i've got a picture of my boat here please ignore the uh, the stupid person on the front there but it's a really good uh, picture for for this purpose now my tiller pilot would have to fit ideally about here ideally you need about 18 inches or 20 centimeters from the pivot point which is somewhere back here 
to where the little pin fits and attaches to the tiller. Um, and then the tiller pallet would go over here. Now, my problem is, if you look here, the stowage ends about here and about here. And this is all, this is a sealed um, buoyancy tank full of polystyrene. So I don't really want to damage the integrity of that for a number of reasons. And actually, it's really hard, I think, to fit something inside here without really butchering the boat. The other issue I've got is that this deck is actually quite slanted um, and forms part of the scuppers. Um, so it's not particularly conducive to, you know, putting a block on anyway. So I'm going to fit my block just as, as this guy has done in his Corriby, somewhere around here. Um, now, I, I'm not going to epoxy resin it all to begin with. And the reason for that is I, I'm going to test whereabouts it goes. Now, this guy, if you look at the STP10 and the notes here, um, he actually um, talks about how he fitted this in the perfect place, that according to the Simrad manual. And actually, the boat uh, didn't respond quick enough. And he believed it was because the tiller pilot needed to be a little bit further back. Now, if you think about the arc of a circle, the further back this tiller pilot connects, the the more it'll be able to pull and push the rudder. So, and it'll be able to pull and push it a further distance quicker. Now for a dinghy, that's probably a good thing. For a big yacht, you probably don't want that. It'll probably make it oversensitive. Now, the negative of that or the payoff for that is that obviously if you grab your tiller here and try and turn the tiller, it's a lot harder to turn the tiller than where if you were holding the tiller right out at the end. So I've been, you know, learning the, the lugger for some weeks now. And I've realized that that tiller, when you're on attack and, and just on a, a, a good bearing, you hardly touch it she moves a centimeter each side of the center point will do so i'm going to try this at the recommended distances to begin with but what i'm then going to do is maybe uh move this box and try it at other distances so I, I, stupidly, here's me talking about making this out of wood. Well, I've actually <laughs> just designed one in Fusion 360, and I'm going to 3D print it. So you can see it is um, exactly the same as the uh, other one. So you can see it's pretty same shape as the other one. Basically, it's a block. And you curve these off because you don't want to catch your leg on, on it or anything. Um, and I've put three holes in mine. This is just for test purposes. Um, just in, you know, just it gives me a little bit of uh, leeway there. If I um, just do inspect that to there, uh, you can see, well, these are 13. So it's about two centimeters of of leeway there also it allows me to bring the block forward and backward a little bit just gives you some leeway i think if i print this right this will be strong enough to sort it out the other thing is if i print it in pla it will give a nice smooth back um and we'll be able to uh, stick stuff to it so that will go to the printer now let's see what we come up with there she is printing. You can see how tightly woven the interior is. It's not solid, but it's extremely tight. 80% filled with the quadrangle. It's got the strongest fill pattern as well. There's all sorts of science goes into this. It actually took me an hour to get this printer going. I've got some new um, filament. I've been, I've been using the same filament for years and they've just stopped making it. So I've had to use this new one, it's taken ages to get the right temperature to get it printing properly. So hopefully, touch wood, we're now uh, all ready to go on that. And here is the finished block. And I've actually put the metal, I don't know what you call that little metal cup that the Simrad 
fits into. Now, it was a bit tight for these holes, so I actually sold, used the soldering iron and I actually melted it in. So, um, I'm hoping I can push it out <laughs> when I need to, after the test. But actually, if we do go for a PLA solution, oh, my light just went, sorry about that. If we do go for a PLA solution, a uh, 3D printed block like this, and it flexes really well, then I will, yeah, it's probably really good, the right size hole, because this will be nice and permanent then. I can always cut and drill this out if I need to. So, um, or actually just heat it up again and push it out, it'll be fine. Um, what it means I can't do is test it in these different places, but I'll just have to move the block around instead. But that is, I'm really chuffed with that. That's uh, really nice, really heavy, really solid. I'm ready for a test.